Hey everyone, welcome to Unlearning Youth Group, where the podcast where we take a look at all the things we learned back in youth group, find the good, unlearn the bad, and figure out where the heck we go from here. We haven't met. My name is Jonathan Carone, and we're joined, as always, by our co-host, Mr. Eric Williams. Eric, go ahead and say hey to the people. This uh, season is uh, ending already. It's like it's we need to sing Friends or Friends Forever at the end of uh, church camp, sit in a circle, and Gotta have start a hugging each other Yeah, around the campfire, let, let everybody know like we're going to stay friends forever and, and never talk to them. I wonder how that works in today's culture now that like everyone has a cell phone and social media. Like you can stay friends forever now. Yeah. We didn't get that yeah. opportunity when we were kids. Yeah, you could stay connected with your church camp buddy. But and perfect uh, transition is you can stay connected to us whether it's subscribing on your favorite podcast <laughs> platform or watching us on YouTube and you know hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification uh, for notifications because it doesn't cost you anything, but it means the world to us. Well done. I didn't have to do it this week. So mm, that felt nice. I got nice. you, buddy. I got that, you. That was a, yeah, that was a quality transition. Hey, so this week is sort of a part two from last week. We're ending off this season talking about church hurt and how we respond to it. Last week, we talked about how we respond to those who we care for, who have been hurt by the church. This week, we're going to be talking more about how we respond ourselves when the church has hurt us because. Eric and I both, we've experienced this. Uh, one thing that you guys may not realize, there was a, uh, probably two or three seasons ago, Eric, I don't think I'm putting you on blast here because we've talked about it before, but mm -hmm. you were going through some church hurt and said some things on the, like in recordings that as I was editing them up, I'm like, huh, I don't think six months from now, Eric would want people hearing that. <laughs> and so dealing with how you deal with church hurt is something that, I don't think in this cultural moment we're talking about a lot. I think we're talking a lot about church hurt and being mm -hmm. hurt by the church, but we're not talking about how to respond to it and come back from it in a healthy way. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the, uh, you know, we've talked about it a little bit last week, but uh, so go back and listen to that if you haven't already. Uh, but, you know, there is an inherent power structure and, you know, there's for a lot of, uh, church denominations and backgrounds, kind of the infallibility or the doctrine of authority um, can fuel. Honor culture. Yeah, honor culture starts to fuel um, the this church hurt side of not being able to actually talk about it. And I think social media, whether you want to you know talk about the exvangelical deconstruction movement, like has provided more of a platform for people who in the past may have been uh, kind of sequestered in their hurt, either because they didn't have the platform or because they didn't feel like it, or they didn't feel like there were others that were going through it. Um, you know, and, and so I think people who are a generation or two older than us uh, are probably like, man, I wish, I wish I could have talked about some of those things early on. Absolutely. We're connected in a way that, no generation before us ever has been. So the mm -hmm. stories are out there more. You feel like you feel like you're not alone for the first time. Right. And so we want to talk today about how we respond when we're hurt by the church. But before we get into it, well, I on. do before want to make some a disclaimer because I do want to say this is that uh, we now have this platform and we can talk about it. But what we are going to talk about is um, the fact that we, we don't really have a playbook right now for how do you yes. deal with this in a healthy way? How do you process this in a healthy way? Because like everything on the internet, Twitter, whatever, you become in this echo, t TikTok is like this too. Mm -hmm. You get into the algorithmic echo chamber where now you are hearing kind of the most extreme versions of any side of any argument. And so my hope uh, today is to maybe bring a little bit more um, of that, you know, even keeled side and the nuance to the discussion so that it's not just the people who are hurt by the church and we throw out the baby with the bathwater. And so that there's no claim as a bait and switch, we'll be straight up with you. Our goal is to keep you a part of Christianity mm -hmm. is to keep you in a relationship with Jesus. So like, I don't want to get through this and make you think that we're talking about all these ways that you can respond to church hurt that you're then going to walk away and maybe it's confusing as you listen to it. Our goal with this podcast, with everything we do is to 
take a look at all the things we were taught, all the things that we've experienced, find the good, unlearn the bad, and figure out where we go from here. And so today is more of one of those unlearn the bad episodes and figure out where we go from here after unlearning the bad. And the clarifications that we do want to point out is while some of the things we talk about might apply in these situations, we're not talking about how to respond to abuse. We're not talking about anything that has to do with spiritual, physical, or sexual abuse. That's not what this conversation is about. That's an entirely different issue that it requires different responses and different conversations. So yeah. if we say something that's lighthearted or off the cuff or is a joke, or maybe you think we're flippant, we're not talking to those of you who have experienced actual abuse. So we're not being flippant with abuse issues in that. So I want you to hear that from us so that you know our tone going into this. Yeah, exactly. I think we're, think about that gray area between like, and and for those of you who, who are, those of you who know, you know, right? It's to the point where it's like, well, what did the church do to hurt you? You know, when you have well-meaning people that ask you, or when you're trying to process on your own, you start to even feel a little gaslit here because you're like, well, I mean, there wasn't like any physical abuse. Nobody was yelling at me. Nobody was was physically abusing me. There wasn't, uh, you know, nobody came on to me sexually or or sexually abused me, uh, you know, and, and even spiritually. I mean, yeah, I could probably make the case for spiritual abuse, but it's like you start to feel like, oh, man, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing hurt. But like if this was a court of law, you're like, well, I don't know what to somebody has it worse. With. Yeah, somebody has it worse or it's not those things. Or when people are like, so what did they really do to you? You know, what what really happened? And you're like, well, this is for that gray area where it doesn't quite cross those lines. And if it does cross those lines, you need to seek out the help of an authority figure. If a law has been broken, seek out the help of law enforcement. Do that. Okay, so. Please, this is not, this, this is like the general disclaimer on YouTube for any lawyer or therapist. <laughs> like, this is not legal advice. This is not, right. you know, official. You, we are not in a therapy uh, uh, relationship here. If that has happened to you, please find the appropriate help. This is for that other gray area where it's like things just didn't end well. Things happened poorly. Maybe there were like micro, I don't know if you want to call them microaggressions or anything else like that, that really led to you experiencing hurt from a church for a lot of people. It's like you something were happened and you were now hurt by it. Yeah. That's maybe you were on staff and, and that, that staff relationship ended poorly. There are people listening that I, that I know that I work with. It's like you were in the internship program at a mega church and then they gave you the runaround and then they ended up treating you poorly as a volunteer and you never got hired or you were a key volunteer. And then all of a sudden nobody reached out to, you know, there are just different things that, that can happen. That you know, are, your life, you know, what happened. Yeah. Yeah. So those are just some some examples there. So what do we what do we do about this in these in these cases? We've got a couple of different responses that we have for you. Uh, I think we're going to cover four specifically, right, Jonathan? Yep. So we'll do four responses. Last week we did three, but we're going to do the same format just to give you some responses that you can work through as you do this. And the first response that I would say is you're processing through your hurt is to ask someone else who is outside the church that hurt you but inside your sphere of influence to weigh in on what happened. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we get so emotionally invested in what we're experiencing that we feel things that are different from what actually happened. And that doesn't invalidate what you're feeling. Your feelings right. are absolutely 100% true or 100% real, but right. oftentimes they're not always true. We feel things that are real, but they may not be true. So yeah, having the way, someone else the way I put it before know, is your ahead. feelings, your feelings are real, but they're not always reliable for decision making. So, you know, whether yes. you want to say they're true or not, those feelings are real and they feel very true to you, but are they reliable to make big time decisions based on them? Possibly not. And here's the thing inside the church, this is a discipleship issue that is kind of a soapbox that I'm so glad my church does this now. We were taught a lot of things growing up about our mind and what to think and what to do and how to act, but we were never taught in the church how to handle our emotions. Like the emotional portion of our brain is something that was totally missed and wasn't talked about when it came to spiritual formation or personal formation or anything like that. So a lot of times we're feeling things and we don't know how to handle them in a 
Christ honoring or even like fully formed way because we never had someone teach us. They just told us what to think, not how to feel. So yeah. if you're hurt by the church, you're probably experiencing some type of feeling that you're needing to process and mm-hmm. having someone, you know, and trust speak into that situation will allow some outside perspective and will give you a more well-rounded view of what happened. And maybe they'll validate the hurt you're feeling and let you know that what you experienced was wrong and that it should not have happened. Maybe they'll give you a different perspective to what happened that might make you realize that, Hey, like maybe things aren't exactly as what I'm feeling. And then that doesn't, Mm -hmm. doesn't invalidate your hurt. That doesn't take away the hurt, but it can help you heal from the hurt when you start to realize that what happened may or may not have been meant to happen the way that it actually happened. Yeah. And I think the the important distinction that you made was like somebody outside of the church that, that you're mm-hmm. being hurt by. Um, part of that was what we talked about last week, where there is, there's a sense of like, there's a vested interest in people within that church to automatically defend the church. And it's just human nature and it's natural mm-hmm. to, to do that. And so um, helping getting that outside perspective is going to, is going to maybe, you know, they're not going to be unbiased or objective a hundred percent, but it might help. But I think um, the most important piece on this for me is like, get help. And if that means professional help, get therapy, please get therapy yep. because there are things that are going on with you because you were hurt. It's just like any other sort of trauma or situation that you need to seek help so you can process through these things in order to move on. And uh, cause otherwise um, you're not really experiencing freedom. And I got this from Twitter. There's a, a guy named Trey Ferguson. He says this, he had, a, he had like a five or six point, you know, Twitter thread, but I'm going to read this from him. He says, a lot of y'all think you left toxic Christianity behind, but you have not. You may have left the creeds behind, but this harmful way of being in which you assume to have the word, the world figured out, you took that with you and you are not as free as you'd like to be. This is not inherently deficient. We're all works in process in progress. What is problematic is that some of you cannot conceive of a life without a platform. And so you presume to speak authoritatively on that, which you are still trying to begin to understand. If you do not consistently work to name your trauma before you begin to speak as an authority on the trauma you claim to have left behind, you will bleed all over everyone else as you become more of what you detest. And so that was like, that hit me like a ton of bricks because I think where people in the church start to feel uh, very negative thoughts about the deconstruction or evangelical movement isn't about the people who have been hurt and are trying to work through their trauma. It's about the people who have, who inside the church have just taken that same system and mentality of like, this is my attitude that I that I was. It was almost like the opposite of a of a Saul to Paul conversion. It's like a Paul to Saul conversion, right? You know, it's like well, I'm they're taking... trading one form of fundamentalism in for another. Yes, is what it is. Yeah. It's so it's fundamentally the fundamental for the church, and then being fundamentally against evangelicalism or the church or anything else like that. Yeah, and you you do that when you don't process. You do right. that when you don't have someone speak into what you're feeling, and when you try to figure it out on your own. And And it's almost like a live process thing too. You know, when, when you are, when you are openly and actively processing your trauma publicly, that is what I think mm -hmm. uh, Trey Ferguson is talking about here. It's like you end up bleeding all over everybody else and you end up becoming more of who you are. And when you don't, when you're only speaking to that echo chamber um, in your trauma, it's not, that's not actually helping you heal. You need someone that's going to help move you steps down the road towards healing as opposed to just, it's, it's one thing to validate your hurt. That's great. But you cannot just stay in that trauma. You've got to have someone help you walk into healing. And one of the things that I think the word is frustrate probably Mm -hmm. frustrates me the most about some of the deconstructing ex-evangelical groupings on TikTok is so many people who have the loudest voices right now are still trying to process and deconstruct and go through it. And so they're leading people, they're speaking defiantly and well, I don't know if defiantly, definitively on the issue as they are processing it themselves and other people are following them in that. There are even people like Josh Harris, 
about a year, year and a half ago, put out a course on deconstruction. He wanted to be a, a pastor of deconstruction pretty much. And he, Mm -hmm. he pulled it down right away because there was a terrible feedback to it, but he's not the only one who was trying to do that. You've got people who were pastors who are now leaving the faith and deconstructing who are taking the pastoring portion of it and leading people in their deconstruction of the faith because they're going through it and they want others to go through it because again, you trade one thing in for another. Yeah. And, and I, they I think want that's, that same type of, go ahead. I was going to say it, it is, it is exactly the same type. So if you think about that pastor who is in the church speaking definitively on what is inherently an undefined situation in the Bible, right? It's like, I'm speaking with authority on this subject. Um, and then you get into the, the deconstruct side and you go, Oh, now I'm speaking with authority. My, my, my default is to speak with authority, even though mm-hmm. what, what I think I've learned in my process of healing or deconstruction or whatever you want to call it is that I'm okay with things not being authoritatively true and figured out. And so I've approached that. I'm so much more open-handed now than I used to be. Right. Some of the areas in scripture where it's like, Hey, there's some things that, yeah, I think it's like, this is pretty much 99% figured, but it's like, there's a lot of other things. It's like, I can accept, I can accept a, a wide range of interpretations on this. So the same thing is true when you are on the outside looking into evangelicalism or whatever your faith background is and saying like, instead of saying authoritatively that every mega church is like this, every evangelical church is like this. And I have every evangelical person, every evangelical person is it's like, I think uh, we mentioned in a previous episode where it's like, what, what I cannot do is I cannot, I cannot go back to the same. uh, I cannot go back to the same drink from the same toxic well that hurt me. Um, and that, that's kind of what's happening here is you're, you're, you may have a different flavor, but you're going back to that same toxic mentality Uh of speaking authoritatively on things that you, you have not figured out yourself or that are still in process for you. Yep. So I think to wrap it up, you know, what I, what I would say is that church hurt before we go into anything else, church hurt is not a figure it out on your own situation. Church hurt is not a time to trust your gut and church hurt is definitely a time to get help. Do not do this alone. Do not think you can DIY yourself out of church hurt. It's the same as when we tell people within the church is like Christians need therapy and it's okay for pastors to get therapy. Mm -hmm. If you are hurt, get therapy. Someone who is professionally equipped to help you process some of the traumas that you've experienced. If you truly would say, I have been traumatized by the church. If it is that serious for you to say that, then it should be serious enough for you to get professional help. Absolutely. 100%. Because it's going to be something that sticks with you the rest of your life, one way or the other. And if you want to heal from it, you're going to need to get help. And one of the, another way that I believe helps you is our second response. Mm -hmm. And that is talk to the person who hurt you. And before any fists come up, I'm not talking about abuse again. If your situation was one of abuse or it's not safe for you to talk to the person, this response is something you should not do. You should not talk to the person who hurt you if it was a case of abuse or anything like that. But for everyone else, having a conversation with the person who hurt you while terrifying, it does bring healing and closure. Mm -hmm. And it also follows a biblical example. We'll get in that in a little bit, but I'll tell you my story on this front because I speak from experience here and I don't want to project my experience onto you, but this is something I know has helped me. I know it's helped others when they have done it as well. The church I was on staff at in Knoxville, Tennessee, um, I left that I was quote unquote coached off staff. I was effectively let go. And we stayed in town after that for about four and a half years once we realized that we were moving, I decided I don't want this hurt, this weight hanging over me as we left. I didn't want to keep this as a part of my being. So I emailed the pastor who oversaw the coaching of the off staffing. And I told him like, Hey, we're moving. I'd love to clear the air with you before we leave. Uh, Is there any time over the next month or so you can have lunch? 
he emailed me back back pretty quickly and said, Hey, are you free today? So he was willing to talk that day. And so he cleared the schedule. We went to lunch and we talked for probably about 90 minutes about everything that went down a few years before. He told me, like, he gave me in-depth reasoning of why he thought I was doing things and where he was coming from. Like, Hey, I said, Hey, you did this. And he's like, well, here's why I did that. And there were places where I defended myself because I thought he was off base, but there were also some places where I'm like, you know what? Like, you're right. I, I did do that. And so we talked about, I was able to tell him how some of the things that he did and said to me affected me long-term. And he had no clue that I had responded to the things he did in those ways or that he had hurt me and in those ways. And he apologized for those things. Once he realized they happened, he was humble enough to apologize, which I know not everyone is. So that was a very, I want to give him credit for that. But th- here's the other thing. He also let me know that he wasn't in a healthy place when all of this went down. And he mentioned a few ways that he wished he could have done things differently if he was to do it again. So that conversation after time and perspective had been put into place was a very healing conversation because I was able to apologize for things that I got wrong. I was able to hear some things of, Oh, he did this because he thought this and it was an incorrect assumption about me, but he apologized for it. Once I pointed it out, he apologized for the things that he did that caused something that was not his intention, but still happened. And why I wouldn't walk back into that. I would, if we were to move back to Knoxville tomorrow, I would not want to go back to that church because of the baggage that I have there. But that experience no longer holds a hurt inside of me. And that hurt has been healed. So if you're able to talking to the person who was over the hurt can bring healing. And I will say this too, uh, and hopefully you agree with me on this side is uh, even though that is response number two, there may be a long, a, a, a lot of space between step one. There and was step four and a half two. years for me. Yeah. yeah. This isn't like it was step four and one. a half years. Yeah. So I would say for the people that are like, oh man, I couldn't even imagine being in the room with that person right now. It, it may be too painful for you right now. And that, that I would say that's an indication that there's still more, uh, healing and trauma. Like that. I love what, what Trey said on, on his post is he says, if you do not consistently work to name your trauma before you begin to speak as an authority on the trauma, you claim to have mm-hmm. left behind, you will bleed all over everyone else and become more of you, what you detest. Cause I, I, I mean, I'll be honest. Um, there are probably a couple of people that I'm not ready to sit in a room with. And in fact, I would actively avoid, uh, right now, because if I decide to speak on that trauma and situation, I will bleed, perhaps violently bleed all over them. And that is not going Mm -hmm. to be healthy to move on. Does that conversation need to happen eventually with certain people? Yeah, for sure. But I want to make sure I speak to some people that are sitting there going like, there's no way. What I will say from a church staff. Four and a half years. Right. But that that was the gap for me. Let's say this. I mean, you led student ministry. I led student Like we've led ministries before. We've been in church. From a church staff perspective, let me just tell you this. Um, again, as someone who's been hurt by the church, so I totally empathize with the church hurt. But from the church staff perspective, there were times where there would be a volunteer that I would hear of third party or even fourth party where someone says, so-and-so left the church because, and they would name something. And you're like, I had no idea. I had no idea that was happening. Mm-hmm. I had no idea that was a hurt. I had no idea. Oh man, I am sorry that that happened. And from their perspective, they might have felt like they said something or that they that there were warning signs or whatever or they told somebody. But it's like the church staff, we would be sitting around going, "Are you kidding me?" Like I didn't, Sunday's always I, coming. We don't realize I what happened. I had no idea. You know what I mean? It's like we're all human. So, I think part of that is like give the other person the opportunity to apologize if there was a wrong. Um, once you've, once you felt like you're in a good place and they may not, I'll say the conversation that Jonathan described, uh, will not best happen case for all, all of you. Yeah. It, it will it not happen for all of you. It was and best so, case scenario. If they even take the meeting to begin with, mm-hmm. but, uh, at least what that does for you is that takes the burden off of you where you can release and say, I have let them know 
I have done everything I can and I am no mm-hmm. longer going to do the old uh, example of like, I'm going to drink the poison hoping that you die. I'm not going to yeah. do that anymore. I'm going to let that go. You've done your part. And, yes, exactly. And there's a, there's a, there's a therapy method that you may have heard before. You may not have, you may think it's cheesy, but the idea of writing a letter out to the person you, who hurt you mm-hmm. and then never sending it to them. Yep. And like, if we want to go youth group, burning it in the fire. Yeah, that's right. Nail it like, to the cross. <laughs> uh huh. But no, like my, my wife was in counseling about a year or so ago. And, uh, one of the things her therapist said to do was just that. And she hated the idea. She thought it was so cheesy. Then she wrote the letter. She took the time to sit down and write out her thoughts and feelings and, and read the letter. And then her therapist actually had her read the letter back to her and she never gave it to the person who she was writing it to, but she came home from counseling that day. So much more lighter spirited, like her spirit was lighter that years of this hurt wasn't completely gone, but she had been able to get her feelings out on paper and to tell someone else exactly how she felt. And that was therapeutic. And that was helpful. So if you're not in a place to. Which is why that, that our response is talk to someone else, because like, it could be writing it out. It could be, um, you know, a a great, if you have a safe place to do this and again, therapy, therapy, therapy. Uh, But if you have a safe place (laughs) or a safe person, um, I've done it too, where it's like the therapist or the individual will be like, Hey, let's role play. And like, you talk to someone who's emotionally healthy because like, if Jonathan and I did this, this sounds kind of cheesy, but again, I was like, Hey, Jonathan, I'm in an emotionally healthy place. I'm going to represent this individual. I want you to tell me the things that you would want to tell them. Right. And so like, mm-hmm. if writing is not your thing, that's great. But it's the same thing as, you, as your wife went through. It's like essentially putting my feelings down and speaking them out loud and naming, naming that trauma, right? Name that trauma, put because that out there. You may it's like, not hey, have we should make that a new, uh, let, let's make that a new uh, game show. Name that trauma, right? <laughs> Da-da-da, ba-da-da. Hi, this is Jonathan. He's in his mid thirties and he was uh, selected. Cry nights at church staff, camp. Right. <laughs> Oh man, that'd be great. Just like blindfold someone and then toss them out, <laughs> out of a curtain. And then they take off the blindfold. And it's like, you were a church volunteer for a mega church for five years. Name that trauma. And it's like, uh, um, I, I was, I was a key volunteer every single week. And then they didn't invite me to the involunteer celebration because they put my email in wrong. And I've been hurt ever since. And it's like, whoa, ding, 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 ding. if we ever do a live show, first off, it'd be the first time you and I ever met in person. <laughs> But second off, we would have to play that game. That game, uh, Jonathan's story with Jerry. Uh, what are some of our other game shows that we would do? <laughs> yeah, the Liberty Stories, friend of the show. We'd have yeah. to have friend. We'd have to have a friend of the show <laughs> segment where we just talk about Mark Driscoll, Jerry, uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. and Senior, uh, and uh, Matt Chandler, Matt Chandler, Billy Graham, yeah. couple. Yeah, friend of the show, all of them. <laughs> uh, but 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 getting back on track, even if. Eric is not the pastor who hurt me having so like speaking the things I feel and getting a response from someone who is in that, even if it's role-playing that position will be therapeutic and will be helpful. So if you can't have the conversation with the person who hurt you, have it with somebody. Hey, I'm going to offer this and Jonathan doesn't know I'm offering it. Cause it just popped into the, the Eric squirrel brain. Hello at unlearningyouthgroup.com. I'm serious about this. If there is someone that you need to send a letter to that this letter will never see the light of day ever again, and you want to write a letter to the person that hurt you, send it to us, send it to us. Cause I, I would love to be that safe place for you to be able to send that to and let, let us know. Like, do you want a response? Do you want anything else like that? If the act of you typing that up and sending it, you can keep names out of it if you want, whatever, if that will help you heal, Let us be that place for you as well. 100%. I'm all for it. Moving forward past our game shows, past Mm. that. The the first two responses were our empathetic ways to hopefully coach you through 
some of the basic ideas that you need to do to work through your hurt. This third response is the one that clicked for me the most. And it's the one that I continue to go back to over and over and over again. And it might sound basic and it might sound flippant, even though I don't want it to, but it's a concept that you probably need to wrestle with some. And that's the idea that you were hurt by people, not by Jesus. You were hurt by people who might've represented Jesus, but you were not hurt by Jesus. And there's a, we've, we mentioned it earlier, but there's a pipeline right now of people who were hurt by the church, who then leave the church, who deconstruct their faith, and then leave the faith altogether because of the things church people did. And this show, we want you to deconstruct or unlearn all the toxic parts of your church experience, but we want you to hold on to Jesus because it was people who hurt you, not Jesus. Yeah. And I think that's, that's an important distinction. It's also important to admit that part of the hurt came from people who are representing Jesus to you. Mm -hmm. So I think some of the pushback you get in this section is people will say, uh, well, if that's, you know, they're representing Christ or they are representing Jesus, or if that's the version of Jesus, I don't want to have anything to do with it. I'm going to quote back the old, uh, uh, who was a Gandhi quote or the quotes attributed. I to like him. your Jesus, like, but I don't like your Christians. Yeah. I like your Christ, but I don't like your Christians. That sort of thing. Yeah. Like the, the, the issue here is just remembering, and this might take time too. just like step number two, step one, go, go directly to like, do not pass do that go, tomorrow. Do not, do not delay sign up today, you know, sign up to talk to a therapist, send us an email, what, whatever it is. We're not therapists, but you know, talk to betterhelp.com referral code, blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah. Exactly. Yeah. Sponsor. If you need a, if you need a referral code to betterhelp.com, <laughs> I will send you one. Okay. Cause my therapist is on there. Anyway. Oh, nice. uh, not, I was not just joking. Sponsored. I had no clue. Not, not sponsored. Uh, actually I might put that in the description. Anyway, um, <laughs> do that right away. Talking to the other, the other individual that might take some time. Same mm -hmm. thing with like coming to grips with the fact that it wasn't Jesus that hurt you. Um, it was people. And I think that's part of what, uh, what deconstruction at, as a term has turned into, you know, woke or uh, CRT or anything else that just becomes this scary term that, that doesn't, you know, that means worse than it is now. But like when you talk about deconstruction, it is literally, okay, let's take away what were the things that weren't Jesus that hurt me? Mm -hmm. You know, so the, yes, the lead pastor of the church may be the one that hurt you. And yes, he, he, most of the time it's he, it's probably not a she, but he will just say for, <laughs> for, for, for the majority of us, he go back and listen to the women in ministry episode. If you want to know more about that. Exactly. Uh, should be more she's, but you know, it's anyway, we won't go into that. Uh, he is supposed to be the representation of, uh, scriptural authority according to your, your faith tradition. Right. And so, yes, there is a blurred line there. Uh, but at the same time, like separate out and go, uh, that wasn't, that wasn't Jesus. The other thing is if you were on church staff, understand, yes, it's a church, the church, it, the American evangelical church is also a business as much mm -hmm. as we don't want to say it, it is a business. So therefore there was a business decision that was made that has the uh, facade or has the covering of a Jesus decision. And they may have, or even used... if it was, if, even if it was just mentioned as a business decision, it still had a spiritual impact. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, like even the language that they use. So like you, for you being coached off staff, what, what other corporation would use that language? <laughs> Only the church, right? You're not sitting there with a fortune 500 company with like, Hey, Jonathan, come on in, sit down. How's your heart, buddy. We care more about you than we care about your position here. Like bleh, all that kind of stuff that we do in the church. So yes, there's a lot that makes it feel that way. And honestly, again, coming from the church staff side, it's because that that's just what the church does. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and for the most part, they know well-meaning people believe it and they want mm -hmm. what's best for you, but they don't realize it's wrapped in that you know, in, in that Jesus cloak in the same way as good like intentions things, that had bad results. It's the whole freaking premise yeah. of this podcast it, in the same way as some of the things that your parents said to you stick with you more than things mm -hmm. that random strangers have said to you. It's like oh, that relationship, that tie 
means something different. Looking for the approval of your mom or dad uh, and not getting it hurts more than looking for the approval of, you know, some other random and not, yeah, and not getting it. Why? Because they have a different relationship. They have a Mm -hmm. different connection with you. And so being hurt by someone in the church or by the church universal is going to have a different component to it than just being fired from, from a, a, a job or as a volunteer being told, Hey, we, you know, you can't use your spiritual gifts here or, you know, auditioning for the worship team and being told, Hey, you're, you didn't make the cut. Right. It's like, yep. it, it, you don't have that same feeling if you didn't make the American idol or the U, American <laughs> you talent audition. I don't know. Maybe and do. I, I want to speak directly to one of the pushbacks to this idea where a lot of times people will say, well, people are sinful. You can't hold them to such a high standard. And if someone tells you that in the midst of you telling them about your hurt, in the power invested in me as the host of this podcast, punch them in the face. Uh, like, <laughs> just do it. Punch them directly in the face. I don't, that, I don't know if I have like power, a line. but... <laughs> that sounds like a line from friend of the show, either Mark Driscoll or Matt Chandler. So that's channeling both of them. It does. It's also a little Kimmy Schmidt there. By the power right. invested in me as an adult. <laughs> That's true. But I want to I want to reframe that idea. People are sinful and they're going to do stupid things that are harmful. And I'm sorry you had to experience that. Mm-hmm. Jesus never meant for you to experience that. In fact, his whole purpose in coming to earth was to help us not experience those things anymore. And it might be cliche to go to this verse, but You go to Colossians one and it says that through Jesus, everything was reconciled back to perfect that Mm -hmm. God made peace with everything in heaven and on earth through Jesus. And unfortunately we, the people who represent him on this earth, pastors, church people, other believers, we don't always live within that reconciliation and we end up doing harmful, stupid things that we were never meant to do, Mm -hmm. but that's on us. It's not on Jesus. And if you, without getting into too, too deep of a theological idea here, God never designed us to experience any of these hurtful things. That was never part of the plan. We can get into the theology of the fall and another conversation, but after we left the garden of Eden, sins in the world, we're here, we're living in a, in a broken world. And the reason Jesus came back was to reconcile it all back to perfect but we're not there yet. We're living in that in between. You've heard that cliche. And unfortunately people are going to do stupid, hurtful things. And so because of that, I would encourage you, you need to find the Jesus of the Bible. You need to read and study who he was. What was the real Jesus like? What was the Jesus of the gospels like? What was his personality? What were the things he stood for? And you need to follow him personally, instead of the representations of him. Because even in the Bible, the representatives of religion got it wrong and did stupid things. It's been happening since even before Jesus was on this earth. Since religion has been around, people have been doing it in bad ways. And that doesn't mean I'm not a fan of the local church. I said last week, I'm a gigantic fan of the local church when it's healthy. But we have to acknowledge that it's not always healthy. Exactly. Uh, yes, it's not always healthy because people aren't always healthy and people are the ones that Correct. are running, running the church. And, uh, and I think, um, I, li- I like your, what, what you said is go, go back to the Jesus piece. And so for all of, uh, all of our reformed Theo bros that are listening, which is probably nobody at this point, um, uh, you know, <laughs> if you're like, if you're listening to this, you're probably just hate listening. You're like masochistically rage listening to us talk about things. And you're just, you know, you got Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson in the background and probably a little bit of Andrew Tate uh, listening. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. (laughs) (laughs) The pipeline is there and you're like, Joe Rogan makes a lot of good points anyway. uh, Sorry. So, (laughs) but the side, the side here is like, if you're upset by us saying, Hey, go back to what Jesus said. And even a little bit of like, read the red letters. You know, you've kind of heard that. I'm not saying throw out the rest of the Bible, uh, but I I do think there is a different perspective where you can separate out like what is what is Paul, what is Jesus, what is Old Testament, um, and 
and really explore that for yourself first. Uh, and some churches out. like to worship Paul as much or more than they worship Jesus. Exactly. Let's be and, and even more is they like to worship their interpretation of Paul than they would, than they do Jesus. And I think, you know, there, there was somebody that I really respect on, on TikTok, And he, he said, I think that, uh, Paul shows his willingness to change his opinion through scripture, uh, based on his season of life, because early on he thought like, he's like, don't even get married because Jesus is coming back today. You know what I mean? And then as he got further on in his ministry, you hear him writing about like, he can't wait, uh, to die because he can't wait to be with Jesus. He started to realize like Jesus isn't coming back before, before he dies. And so if Paul can change his perspective on non-essential things, I think it's okay for us to also change our perspective on non-essential things, separate out where maybe your pastor's interpretation of the scripture uh, starts and where or ends and like where Jesus begins and you have you have to find that find that spot for yourself and the last response that i want to go with is one that i was really tempted to leave out because i don't want it to be taken the wrong way but i think it's an important one that we have to at least mention and we've spent 30 or 40 minutes at this point being empathetic to those of you who have been hurt by the church and I know this applies to a segment out there, so I want to handle it as delicately as possible. And to do that, I want to start with a story to kind of set it up so that you can get an idea of what I'm talking about here. A few months ago, a pastor, a friend of mine called, and he wanted to know how he should respond to a woman in his town who had been writing blog posts and talking about how the church hurt her, and she was very loudly talking about her church hurt. The story went that she had treated her husband terribly and she had had an affair. And when called on it, they ended up getting divorced. The church people, those who had seen the marriage up close and personal, they quote unquote sided with the husband. They'd seen the emotional manipulation. They seen the affair. They saw how she chose to prioritize herself and her desires over everything else. And specifically her husband and After all of that went down, the woman responded by saying she was hurt by the church because the church abandoned her when she was going through a tough time. In reality, they didn't abandon her. People in relationship with her called her on her sin. And when she decided that she didn't want to hear that, they let her continue to live her life, which is basically what Matthew 18 says to do. And I know this is an extreme example of that, but there are people, possibly some of you listening to this today that have been hurt by the church or say you've been hurt by the church. But when you take emotion and personal feelings out of it, you were actually called out on legit sin, not behavior modification, bull crap, not something minor, but a legit sin. And you didn't like being called out on it. And so now you claim the church didn't accept them or weren't, you claim that the church didn't accept you. You claim that the church wasn't for you, that the church didn't love you and you were hurt by it. And if that's you in the most loving way, I can possibly say this. And only, you know, if this is you, I cannot project this onto you. My response to that would be to ask you if you're humble enough to submit yourself to scripture and the Holy spirit and to see if the correction by those in your life who are spiritual peers or leaders was because of legit sin in your life. That doesn't mean that it didn't hurt. I don't want to minimize the feeling that you have because anytime someone calls us out on our sin, it's going to hurt. It's not going to feel good. God's standard for us as Christians is always going to be painful because it goes against many of our natural tendencies. But sometimes my wife calls me on stuff that I did, I do that I don't mean to, and it hurts. The loving correction hurts. Sometimes it's not loving comes from assholes. That's just part of it. That like, we have to admit that that that's a piece of it. So if, if, if it's just someone being a jerk, I'm not talking about that. But if there is legit sin in your life that someone who loves you called you on, I hope you can even though it hurts, even though hearing it hurts, 
I hope you can get to a point where you say God's design for your life is more important than the sinful thing that you desire. And that's hard. That's really, really hard to do. I don't like being in that spot. I'm in that spot a lot. I don't respond well when I'm in that spot. I get defensive. I fight back. And then I retreat away and realize that, oh, crap, they were right. So there's no judgment for me if you're in that spot. But some of you, that's a conversation you're going to have to have with someone else so that they can point out some of those things. But that's also a reality you're going to have to come to grips with in your own brain. And I, I think the other aspect um, to this, and I'll translate, I'm going to translate because I, I, as I'm hearing Jonathan talk, I know that for some of you, even the words he's saying is very triggering to you. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have to submit yourself, God, scripture, all that kind of stuff. And I don't know where you are in your like deconstruction or hurt, but maybe the realistic question is to ask, have you acknowledged the things that you would have done differently? I'm not saying that you did anything wrong, but I'm saying, have you acknowledged the things that you've done differently? And even going back to Jonathan's example of talking to the person that hurt him, it's like, oh, there, I can acknowledge there were some things that didn't, didn't go well on my side either. Mm -hmm. Rarely is there only one person at fault in, in a bad relationship situation. Um, so again, not to, uh, not to let anyone else off the hook or to cast blame on you. But I think a true sign of processing your uh, trauma, your grief, your situation is when you can say, I was hurt. Um, I didn't handle it effectively. Uh, I would do these things differently. That still doesn't take away the fact that I was hurt or the right. problem with the other person. Um, however, these are some things that maybe I would have done differently or I will do differently if I'm in that situation again. Um, and for some of us, it's like uh, and my example earlier it happened all the time where we would have a volunteer, a key volunteer. That's like the church doesn't care about me. And when you do some investigation, um, it's like, well, they didn't really do a great job of communicating their needs or their desires or their expectations in a way that was heard well by the people that mattered, or they said it to someone else, but not to the people that could do anything about it. And it's like, ah, I understand that you were hurt and the situation stinks, but man, was there some of that that was like, we just did things a different way that you didn't like, but all of a sudden that's mm -hmm. the church. The church is the one that hurt you. So if you find yourself in that situation, it's okay. It's also okay to just say, Hey, this church wasn't for me or this leadership isn't for me without as ascribing it as they're a toxic church. They're a, a toxic leader or that church hurt me. It's just like a relationship, right? You know, it's like, if you, not everybody's your cup of tea and you're not everybody else's cup of tea. And sometimes that's okay to just admit like, this isn't the season for me. So I, this and, whole conversation yeah. kind of reminds me of a, uh, of a Instagram account that I think Jonathan, you should follow. It's called the power of self care, uh, power <laughs> dot of dot self dot care. And I follow them and I get trolled all the time because it's a complete troll account. So like the one from a couple of days ago is it's, it's literally this, it's never apologize for anything season. <laughs> it's, it's like fight the urge to people, please. Nobody should be pleased when you're around. And this is like, <laughs> It's, it's like surrounded by things that you're like, oh, it kind of sounds like this is healthy self-care, but it's really just toxic lines from toxic people. And so yeah. if you're in this fourth group, it's the lack of that self-awareness to go like, oh, I'm quite frankly, language warning, I'm buying into my own bullshit. And I've done it. I bought into my own bullshit plenty of times. Ask my wife. She knows that I, I buy into time. my own bullshit all the time. So at some point you got to be able to go, hey, shoot. Where, where, where was my, where were the things I would have done differently here? I, I did something wrong. Yeah. And, and, and it could certainly be, Hey, a, uh, a triggering event or a negative event happened and my reaction wasn't healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, I let the emotions get the best of me. I said something I shouldn't have said. I opened my mouth when I should have kept it shut. I shut my mouth when I should have opened up. Like, that doesn't take the blame off and that doesn't make your hurt not valid. But at the same time, acknowledging some of that shoot. Uh, yep. Uh, I can, I can own this not because you need to like make it better with someone else, 
but it's only going to help you because next time you're in a situation like this, obviously you want something to be different, whether it's a church hurt, a family hurt, a whatever hurt, a member, you're a member of whatever gym or organization, like church hurt isn't unique to churches. It happens in gyms. It happens in families. It happens in other, you know, it happens in your HOA for gosh sakes. I'm so glad I don't live in an HOA. Although I would like a neighborhood pool. That'd be nice. We don't even have that. <laughs> have All a right. Nice as, landscaping. As we close today and as we close this season, I want to leave with this idea. A friend of mine likes to say that the story of humanity from the beginning of time until now paints a picture of a faithful Jesus and an unfaithful bride. Throughout all of time, God's people have been doing stupid, hurtful things. And yet Jesus is still there working to restore all of it back to the way that it was originally created to be in all of its perfection. And if you've been hurt by the church, I want to close this episode and this season out reading scripture over you. So if you're able to, meaning you're not driving, you're not on a treadmill, you're not lifting weights, you're not doing anything that would cause harm, I'd love for you to close your eyes as I read these words because there's something that I wish someone would have told me in, in scripture they would have pointed to me back when I was going through all this. And it comes from Hosea 2 when God is talking about his love for his bride. After laying out all the things that she had done wrong and all the terrible things she had done, this is what he closes with. And now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start all over again. I'm taking you back out into the wilderness where we had our first date. I'll give you bouquets of roses. I'll turn heartbreak Valley into acres of hope. You'll respond as you did when you were younger in those days when you were fresh out of Egypt. At the same time, I'll make a peace treaty between you and wild animals and birds and reptiles. And I'll get rid of all weapons of war. Think of it safe from beasts and bullies and then I'll marry you for good, forever. I'll marry you true and proper in love and tenderness. I'll never leave you nor let you go. You'll know me, God, for who I really am. And my hope and my prayer for you moving forward from here is that you will allow Jesus to start all over again with you, to love you true and to love you proper and to turn your heartbreak valley into acres of hope. That is it for season six with us. Thanks for hanging out with us the last eight weeks. We will be back in May for season seven. As you're listening to this, we're planning out that season. So if you have any topics, feel free to send them over to us. Eric is at Eric W712 on all the major platforms. I am at Jonathan underscore Corona on them as well. You can also email your ideas or your letters that you need to write to somebody to us at hello at unlearningyouthgroup.com. If you like the show, do us a favor and rate and review us wherever you get podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app if you haven't already. Share this episode with a friend if you know they are dealing with church hurt. Two quick reminders before we get out. You can get your merch at unlearningyouthgroup.com and you can send in your funny or awkward youth group story at unlearningyouthgroup.com as well. As always, thanks for making us a part of your day. Thanks for hanging out with us this season and we'll talk to you again in a few months.